the first time I heard about you going this direction, I'm a big fan of your work. When you came in, the first thing I said is the character, <laughs> Harvey, uh, was Gordon, it Gordon, Harvey, Harvey from Gordon. fighting, right? The way you would speak, the way you would move. But this is the first time we saw you talking about you leaving Hollywood, Rob, if you want to play this clip, go for it. Terrence Howard here, you made huge headlines when you said, after you complete these 15 episodes of Empire, you got to walk away for a while or forever? For good. I'm, I'm, I mean, everyone keeps trying to tell me, don't say it's forever. But I've spent 37 years pretending to be people so that people can pretend to watch and enjoy what I'm doing when I've made some discoveries in my own personal life with the science that, you know, Pythagoras was searching for. I was able to open up the flower of life properly and find the real wave conjugations that we've been looking for for 10,000 years. Why would I continue, you know, walking on water for tips when I... So what what got you to the point of being ready to say this to the world? Because this changed the game. Well, we had introduced Lynchpin years before mm -hmm. um, and was talking about Lynchpin being the common factor, the universal constitution, but no one would take it seriously. We talked about this grand unifying supersymmetry of the Lynchpin, that it showed how the universe behaved in contractive or expansive places. We had showed the ubiquitous nature of Lynchpin. Nobody would take it seriously. So then we decided to let's now challenge the idea of gravity. And we in comparison to a resonance model, like the universe is not based upon force, but based upon resonance, you know, but based upon harmonic frequencies. So we decided to let's put the linchpin in the proper place and let's re since we are saying that this is the common factor that everything comes from it, let's put a number of linchpins in rotation and see if we can rebuild the planet Saturn. Well, we were able to do that without gravity, without dark energy, without dark matter. How can, and without animation, literally rebuild the planet Saturn in a simulation with the hexagon at the top of it. And we were like, okay, they will take this seriously. So when I went to the, we did this the day before I came to the Emmys. So I was just so excited to say, hey, we don't have to worry about this God gravity. You, you did what the day before? Emily? We had did the rebuilding the planet Saturn. That's at the very beginning of my book. The same thing, same thing I showed on Joe Rogan. Right. And I'm like waiting for people to respond. But they immediately took it like, oh, he's crazy. He's talking about he's going to build the planet Saturn. No, I was rebuilding it in a simulator the same way they've rebuilt planets or try to rebuild the solar system or galaxies with dark matter, dark energy, and gravity. I was able to do it without that, and I thought that would mean something, but I forgot you don't attack somebody's God. Gravity has been their God for a long, long time. Who's God? The traditional scientists? Science, the... all of the world. It's Gravity is their God. If I'm if I'm on a set with you doing a movie, which you've been on many, many sets with some of the greatest actors of all time, and you're in the list of some of the greatest actors of all time yourself, w would I meet this Terrence? Like, if we're sitting, we're not shooting, we're sitting, we're waiting for something, are you speaking to me like this or no? This is the only Terrence there is. You know, I love, I love acting. Um, I love the emotional play associated with it. But what's more important right now than saving the planet, that's, than saving the people on the planet, saving the animals on the planet, saving our entire solar system, we don't know what our responsibility is cosmically, but we have to get past this reef right now. We keep getting pushed back to the beach by the desire to suppress and to control everything. So the only Terrence there is, is the one that's trying to change the world, that's trying to provide the free energy, that's trying to provide the, the new geometry that will allow us to fit with the universe instead of competing against the universe. Who, who, which actors that you had conversations like this with were also interested and could hang with uh, you? Nick Nolte. Nick Nolte. Nick Nolte. The great Nick Nolte. Nick wow. Nolte. He's the, he. We've had wonderful conversations. We we're doing a film called Investigating Sex um, in Germany, and we spent two months having the deepest conversation. He actually inspired me to keep going further. Before, he was just talking about the B12 shots and how it affects your, geom your, your body. Um, but we had deep, deep conversations. Him, um, Jeff Bridges, 
Jeff Bridges is an incredibly deep thinker. I would love to talk to Mel Gibson because Mel, I see his mind always jumping. You haven't. Though. I haven't. Have never had the pleasure of meeting him. You've yet. never met Mel Gibson. Never met Mel Gibson. Oh, um, that's an easy one to happen. I mean, it's yeah. a couple guys that know him could make the phone call. Yeah, I, I enjoy. I enjoy his neurosynaptic reactions <laughs> meaning the the way he, he views thinks, the world yeah. from a different lens i love his rhythm of his mind how it clicks so people like that um but most people respond you know in a quizzical way but when you're challenging their status quo when you're challenging you know their basic arithmetic because if you were look at at a, at a grid of one times one equaling one you know it would be it'd be a straight grid going out with just boxes mm -hmm. on a flat plane forever our universe doesn't behave that way. Our universe behaves by everything wrapping itself around, multiplies volumetrically. So what I've been talking about for the longest time is allowing our math to match what the physics work. What does the physical world look like? How does it behave? We can't imaginary, throw imaginary structures out there unless, uh, unless the real structures aren't making sense and the structures that they have as straight lines, platonic solids, they've been wrong for the, from the beginning mm. because there are no straight lines. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. The greater the action, the greater the reaction. The greater the reaction, greater the resistance. The greater the resistance, greater the curvature, which means everything is curved. So measuring the universe with straight lines and with flat planes is an illogical and irrational thing to do if you're measuring curved, living, moving reality. And that, that is what they refuse to change. They've stopped believing that the world is flat, but they're still using flat mechanics to describe the universe. Hi, everyone. My name is Terrence Howard. I'm an actor, um, but in the field of science also. So if you would like to connect with me, you can connect with me on Minect. Um, the QR code is down below, and let's have a great conversation. If you enjoy this video, you want to watch more videos like this, click here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click here.